Hello, dear students. Uh, today we will solve paper four, uh, extended October November 2024. This is question number one A. A rocket has initial mass uh, 7.4 times 10 power 6 kg. Calculate the weight. So, this is one mark. So, no need to write the steps. You know that uh, W is equal to mg. So, in IGCSE, G is always equal to 10. So, whenever you multiply this number with 10 power 1, so this will, this, this will become 10 power 7. So, write as it is. 10 power 6 will become 10 power 7. It will be Newton because the unit of the weight is Newton. Define in words the term weight. You know that, uh, again, the one mark question, so no need to write in detail. Just write the gravitational pull. Or you can uh, define the gravitational force acting on the object is called weight. Next question. Uh, the graph show the speed time graph. Uh, the rocket leaves at ground, uh, leave the ground and travel into the space. So this is the graph. And uh, this is vertical is the speed and horizontal is the time in second. So describe the motion of the rocket from zero to A and from zero to A to B, sorry. So from zero to A, you can see that the line is increasing. So speed is increasing with time. So what is that? Increasing acceleration. Increasing because speed is increasing with time. So increasing acceleration. And from A to B, you can see that the line is not straight. The speed is changing, slightly changing with the time. So it is a constant acceleration, not a curved line. It's a straight line. So it is a constant acceleration or uniform acceleration. At time 400 seconds and use this, calculate the acceleration of the rocket at this time, show your working. So we know that acceleration is equal to change in speed over change in time. Like, and in speed time graph, the acceleration is a gradient. And we know that how to solve the gradient, change in y divided by change in x-axis. You can that see that this is a 400 second and tangential line is always start from uh, the line which just touch the curve from a point. So it's approximately 200. Uh, and uh, when I will see, this may be not accurate because I didn't draw the exact line. So let's suppose the time is approximately 500. So 500 minus 200 is time is 300 second. And the speed is how much speed is changed? 7100 minus zero. So 7100 divided by 300. The answer may be very uh, from 14 to 23. Okay. The next question is, the rocket are used to launch satellite into space. When the satellite is released, the rocket returns to the Earth. Explained in terms of force, why the rocket reached the terminal velocity as it travels through the atmosphere back to the Earth. Terminal velocity is the maximum constant velocity. Due to air resistance or drag force, uh, speed will decrease. Speed of rocket will decrease when it will go back speed and that is called terminal velocity because net force will be zero net force zero and that speed is called terminal velocity no need to write these things just write uh, due to air resistance one mark and a uh, rocket move with constant speed because net force is zero a uh, figure 2.1 show a uh, Offer about the hit of uh, hit a golf with a golf club. The initial momentum of the ball of the golf ball is zero. Initial momentum. It's maybe why because the golf ball is at rest. So what is momentum? One more question. The product of mass and velocity is called momentum. Called momentum. The next is the golf club in contact with the ball for this is the time. 
the velocity of the goal as it leaves. So we will get the impulse. What is impulse? Impulse is when a force acts on an object for a very short time. It's called impulse. And that impulse is equal to change in momentum. So change in momentum, final momentum minus initial momentum. There is no, there is a initial velocity was zero. So the final velocity is 41 meters per second. So the mass is 0 0.4046 kg times velocity is 41 meters per second. After multiplying this, we will get 1.9. The force is equal to by that equation, change in momentum over change in time. Why? Because we know that, again, impulse is equal to change in momentum. That is equal to force times time. So we need to calculate the force. So time will be go that side. So force is equal to change in momentum. Change in momentum in just found it. Divide by, what was the time? 5 times 10 power minus 4. After calculating this, we will get the answer that is 3. 1800. What is the unit of the force? That is Newton. Question number three. State two energy resources for which radiations from the sun is the main source of energy. Wind, solar energy. Oh, there are many. Uh, I'm writing waves, hydroelectric, a wind turbine is used to generate electricity. The useful output from the turbine in one second is 6,000 joules. It's the output energy. And this is time. And uh, the kinetic energy of the wind is hitting the turbine in one second is 11,000 joules. That was input energy. Why? The kinetic energy of the wind hitting the turbine. So that is input energy. The velocity of the wind is uh, hitting the turbine. The velocity of the turbine is 6.3 meters per second. Show that the mass of air hitting the turbine each second is approximately 550 kg. So we have to prove that mass is 550 kg. Kinetic energy, that is equal to 1 by 2 mass times square of speed. Here we have the kinetic energy, uh, 11,000. We have the mass, sorry, we have the velocity and we need to find the mass. Very easy, just make the subject M. So that will be equal to two times kinetic energy, two times kinetic energy divided by square of speed. Just putting the values, two times 11,000 divided by 6.3 square. And you, after calculating this, you will get the answer that is, that should be nearly equal to 550, but my answer is 554 kilograms, which is calculate the efficiency of the turbine. You know that, what is the efficiency? Efficiency is always output over input, useful output energy divided by input energy and output energy always less than the input energy. Some students confuse which one is output, which one, which one is input. Output can never be greater than the input. So obviously 6,000 is less than 11,000. So 6,000 is output energy and 11,000 is input energy. Whenever you solve this, you will get 55% efficiency. Tidal energy and wind energy are both are renewable energy resources, which can be reused again and again, which cannot be vanished. So just one reason why tidal energy is more useful energy than the wind energy. You know, the cost, construction and maintenance. Tidal energy is very reliable. Uh, sometimes we cannot get wind properly. So tidal energy is more reliable. So you get seven months for this question. 4.1 show a pressure cooker on an electric heating element. There is a water inside the cooker, electric heating element and tight fitting lid, sealed cooker. So the pressure cooker is half full of water. As the water is heating, some water evaporate before the water boil. Describe two differences between the evaporation and boiling. And these uh, differences are given in your book. Boiling take place 
at specific temperature, or you can write 100 degrees Celsius, while evaporation takes place takes place uh, at any temperature. Just writing it short because there is no place. Okay. As the water is heated, the pressure of the gas inside the cooker increase. Obviously, the particles will collide with each other. They will get the energy and uh, the pressure is increased. Explain this increase in the pressure in terms of particles. And this is the most common question asked in the many, many papers. The number of gas particles increase. When the water is heated, when the gas is heated, the particles get the kinetic energy, they move very fast and they collide with the containers and they put the pressure, exert the pressure on each other. So there are many points you can write. Explain why the surface temperature of thermic increase. So you know that black color is a good absorber and the white color is a good reflector. So when the black color absorb the radiations, this temperature is increased, so air above the black color get hot. So the temperature is increased. The next question, the state the method of the thermal energy of, for thermic of the air immediately above the road. So that is what, what is that called called? That is called conduction because there are three ways to transfer of heat within the matter the heat transfer due to conduction. So that is called conduction. Uh, another is convection and radiations. So next question is state main method of thermal energy transfer of air immediately above the ground, above the road to the rest of air. So in the fluid, air or liquid, the actual movement of particles due to convection. So this is a second method to transfer of heat. D part, Explain why the surface temperature of thermic is higher than the surrounding air temperature. Volume of the road is very large. So you can write very large volume. This is a second point you can write. A student plays the violin near the doorway to a large room, figure 6.1 show a young teacher standing where he can hear the sound, but he cannot see the students. So this is the X. So you know that and the properties of waves, sound waves, there is a reflection, a refraction and defraction. So state the wave effect that allows a young teacher to hear the sound from the violin at the position of the stand. He's standing, he cannot see him, but he can hear the sound. Why? because of diffraction, because the sound wave will expand from these short edges. So you will just write the name of the effect that is diffraction. Calculate the frequency of the sound with the wavelength of, so this is wavelength in meters, the speed of the sound is 340 meters per second. What is the frequency? We know that the famous wave equation, speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. So we need to find the frequency. The wavelength will divide with the speed. So the speed is 340 meters per second and wavelength is 0 0.75. After dividing, you will get 450 and unit is missing. I told you units are very important. So that is hertz. A violin produces a sound of frequency is 200 to 3800 hertz. The width of the open doorway is 0 0.75. Explain why the young teacher hear the frequency calculated in this one, 450 hertz, clearly, but find a frequency 3500 much harder to hear. So let's suppose the gap size is 0 0.75. When the wave fronts are coming to the doorway, they will expand. What is the condition to be maximum diffraction? The size of the wavelength should be similar to the size of the gap. So in first case, size 
of wavelength is similar to size of gap. But when the frequency is so high, you know that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. So for high frequency, the wavelength will be decreased. For smaller wavelength, for smaller wavelength, gap will be large. So it will be less diffract. When the less diffract, it, uh, he have difficult he difficulty to hear that sound. I will solve uh, question number seven to eleven in the next video. Goodbye.